Thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Meeting Room on the Our Lads Football Network. And we're going to talk Chicago Bears football today. Uh, before we do that, I want to show everybody this Our Lads Draft Guide right here. Of course, the Our Lads Draft Guide is still available. You can go ahead and order one of these at ourlads.com. It's a great time to do it if you're a Bears fan. You want to find out more about your players of course, the guys that were picked up by the team, and we're going to go over those players on this show. Uh, you can order the RLADS Draft Guide, and also the RLADS Draft Review Guide will be coming out in a little bit more than a month. So check that out over at RLADS.com. Now, let's find out what's going on with the Chicago Bears and uh, see how they did in the NFL Draft as we welcome in for the first time Jonathan Wood, writer for The Bears Blog at thebearsblog.com. Jonathan, nice to talk to you today. Uh, nice to be here. Thank you very much for having me on. Looking forward to some good football talk. Yeah, tell me a little bit about your infinity for the Bears and the work that you've done with the blog. Sure. I do a lot of more like analytics stuff for the Bears blog, um, more of a numbers-based approach to football, given that I don't have as much of the X's and O's background. Um, but like did a lot with this draft looking at like where positional value was um, in terms of where's the depth of this draft, where are teams most likely to find value uh, targeting different positions and things like that. Okay. Uh, so before we get into the players and I go over what I usually do when I format this show, you tell me uh, what, what specifically for the Bears. Uh, if I look at it and I just look at how our lads has graded the players that were chosen by the Bears, I mean, some of the players seemed like they were chosen either where they were supposed to go or if we go a little bit further down, like the last three picks weren't even in the draft guide. So it wasn't like there was one pick I noticed that the Bears chosen that was, I guess you can consider a bargain uh, for the R lads draft guide, uh, th the team did end up with our lads first rated tight end. Uh, and we'll get into the other players uh, as we go one, one by one, but tell me how that matches up with your observations. Yeah. Um, the bears board for this year seemed to be a good bit different than the consensus one. Um, I did some work with the athletics consensus, big board put out by Arif Hassan. Um, that compiled like a lot of the main big boards from some of the main draft analysts um, from a variety of sites and then put an average ranking together for prospects based on that. And like you said, um, only one of their picks actually was taken lower than the average ranking, which would indicate like good value. Yes. Um, and that was uh, their the cornerback uh, Johnson in the second round that they took was like 45th and they took him 50th. So like slight value there, but everybody <laughs> yeah. else was um, a good bit ahead of or right around where they were expected to go. So the Bears seemingly were scouting different things than what um, at least the internet analysts were this year. We'll see how that pans out in the next couple of years. Well, how, and, and it's interesting that it happens at a time where you got to believe Ryan Pace is under the microscope now. Uh, I'm not a Bears fan, so I don't know what's going on, but it's a big area and they've got a huge fan base. And I, I know how the sports talk show deal works locally. I'm just guessing that with what happened to Patrick Mahomes and what what's going on with Mitch Trubisky is, is not good. Yeah, that's an understatement. Yeah, and when, that only gets compounded when you factor in, you know, the Bears don't exactly have the greatest history at quarterback since Sid Luckman 50 or 60 years ago. Um, so there was a lot of hope initially for Trubisky to kind of be the guy that was finally going to end all of that. And that obviously is not panning out. And you look at Mahomes and Watson were the next two QBs taken right after him. And there are definitely some angry fans about that. And even though Trubisky is going to get the first shot at the job, he didn't get the option picked up. And that could be a good motivating factor, no question. But I think there's a lot of people who would wager that Foles is going to end up winning that job. It's better for the Bears if Trubisky wins the job because that means he's elevating his game because I think that we're going to expect Foles to do a certain thing. 
that a veteran, a Super Bowl champion can bring to the table as long as he's healthy. Uh, if Trubisky does not win this job, his days in Chicago are probably over, right? Yeah, I would have to think so. Um, I, I look at it as like Foles is clearly better than what Trubisky played in 2019. Um, maybe around on par with what he did in 2018. Like Foles, you know, like you said, he's got some impressive things on his resume, but also like has not been a full-time starter since like 2014 for a reason. So I think like he's Trubisky has to hit a level of like average ish in order to beat Foles out probably, but definitely has a higher ceiling than Foles there, but probably a lower floor as well. All right. Well, no first round draft pick. So if you take a look at the draft, even with the first pick, which was their second round pick 43 overall, and just the entire draft itself, there's one guy that was added to the arsenal on offense. And that was their first pick Cole Komet, the top rated tight end at our lads. And tell me how he's going to be expected to contribute right away. I'm actually really curious about that because he's a very raw prospect, um, only three years out of high school. So very young and um, only a one year starter at Notre Dame and even did baseball in the off season. So like didn't get full off season program stuff in with the football team. And I think that shows up. I've watched a little bit of him since the draft. Um, that shows up pretty clearly in his play last year, that there are times that he's just kind of playing based on athleticism and not really all that technically refined. Um, the Bears in their post-draft uh, press conference talked about him as a Y or like inline, more of a blocking tight end, which is where I think they'll try to play him initially yeah. um, with Jimmy Graham playing more of the pass catcher, like lined up in the slot. But um, he'll have to compete with Demetrius Harris for snaps there. And he's not like he's big and does decent blocking with his size, but isn't terribly refined. So I'm, I'm curious if you'll be able to like earn that full-time role, which even then is probably only about 40% of snaps. All right. According to our lads, uh, you got a player who is one of the more NFL ready tight ends in the class size strength at the point of attack and soft hands will make him an every down player. And uh, a lot of other things that uh, I will leave out because uh, you have to get the guide yourself. Uh, our listening audience out there, but bottom line, a strong manly presence on the field that will be able to handle NFL power right away. Uh, but also uh, a lot of inconsistency and things that don't put him into the category, even though he was the number one rated tight end of being a first round tight end or anybody that has the makings of one of those guys that you're really looking for to position with somebody that can scare the defense, open up the middle of the field. That just doesn't seem to be his, you know, his makeup. Uh, but uh, considering what's happened at the bears at that position over the last couple of years, uh, they, they need something from the tight end spot, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, last year was a nightmare at the tight end spot, which is really important in this like Andy Reid style offense. I think their leading tight end had like 91 receiving yards last year. It was just really, really bad. So um, they, they definitely are going to try to get him on the field early. Um, like some of that scouting report you were just reading there said, um, I'm not sure how much he'll be able to contribute right away in the passing game, but I think ultimately they envision him as somebody who can play in line or yeah. split out wide and do everything, but he has a good bit of development needed before he's ready for that every down roll. All right. The second of the second round picks was Jalen Johnson, second team, all American, all pack 12 this past year. And interesting because both corners, the second and the fifth round corner, I noticed these are physical players. So the bears were not got some physical corners. Johnson was at, at the top there in the second round uh, and this is the type of player that the Bears envision uh, getting a, a lot of snaps early in his career. Yeah, I think uh, Johnson's the one guy in their draft, which I think was mostly future oriented, but Johnson's probably a day one starter playing pretty much every snap. Uh, you know, they cut Prince of Mukamara this offseason. Um, and like you mentioned, Johnson can be physical, which is what uh, Amukamara was. Their other corner, uh, Kyle Fuller, is more of an off. Uh, 
finesse cornerback a little bit. So I think Johnson uh, really steps in day one. And he's another guy, even though he's pretty young, only three years out of high school, he was a two-year starter and played a lot as a freshman too. And there were a lot of um, highly drafted Pac-12 wide receivers this year who he went up against with pretty good results last year. So he comes pretty battle-tested. As far as our lads, uh, his speed, quickness, and ball skills make him a top prospect. He can fit most schemes, uh, though his injury status will be watched uh, he had uh, labrum surgery in March, I believe. So I don't know if you've heard anything since then, but hopefully he'll be ready to go uh, when training camp opens up, whenever training camp opens up. So. All right. We have to go all the way to round four before the third pick in the draft for the Bears. And this is where, if you take a look, it's interesting. Even if you just look at where these guys came from, you can understand where the fans might be scratching their head a little bit. But, I mean, you got Tulsa, Georgia Southern, Tulane, Colorado, and Tennessee State. That's that's not – those aren't powerhouse football programs in college football. Uh, some of these players, including a few of the rookie free agent signings we'll talk about, though, did have productive final seasons with their team. Some of them led their team in sacks. We're not talking Chase Young here, but Travis Gibson was one of those players – whether he plays linebacker, defensive end, he was a defensive end uh, in college, or I believe that's where Arledge graded him. Sixth round grade, by the way, at Arledge. He went in the fourth round with the Bears. 15 career sacks, eight last year at Tulsa. What could you tell us a little bit more about uh, about Gibson? And you might as well also, it's interesting, but you might as well also tell us a little bit about, we can, we can go Gibson, and we can also uh, talk about maybe the free agent players because they're all kind of similar as far as what they did production wise in college. As I mentioned, you got the kid Jones from Maryland led the team with seven sacks last year. Rashad Smith from FAU, probably the most productive of them all. He had 316 career tackles at FAU, uh, led the team the last two years in tackles, seven interceptions the last two years, and was the defensive MVP of the Boca Raton Bowl with 11 tackles, a pick, and a fumble recovery for a touchdown. So I'm not sure I see a big difference in a lot of those linebackers, which is why I think it was a little bit of a surprise to see Gibson go in the fourth round. Yeah, um, Gibson, another one of those really raw players, um, kind of like Komet. Um, you mentioned you had him graded as a defensive end. The Bears run more of a 3-4, and they've said yeah. they envision him as an outside linebacker. Yep. Um, although in college he did, he seemed to do a lot of even like five technique from what I saw in college. So almost more interior D lines. Um, so there'll be a learning curve in that respect of you know, playing standing up instead of down in a three point stance. Also, you know, the jump, like you said, from uh, Tulsa to the NFL is quite large, um, but he's got a lot of tools, pretty nice bend. He's a real good athlete. Um, the, I don't know if you know about the relative athletic score or no. RAS. Um, it's a, just a general measure of athleticism for a prospect compared to all other players at their position. Okay. Um, kind of on a zero to 10 scale where like a 10 is the hundred percent like freak athlete. He had an 8.8. .8, so like 88th percent athlete very good. Um, for an, an edge rusher. Okay. So very good athlete has some tools and ability there, but i um, definitely banking on upside, which was a common theme in the bears draft this year. It's going to take, some development for him to get at the point that he's ready to contribute at a high level in the NFL. Yeah. But that probably fits the bears with a uh, Cleo Mack and a uh, Robert Quinn lined up as their starters there. They don't need a guy who's ready to That's step true. in and be the, be the go-to right away. Yeah. I highlighted, like you said, good athlete plays in a rotation where he uh, was always fresh questionable instincts, needs more core strength, developmental prospect. Uh, what about those other linebackers that were free agent signings? Did you prefer one over the other? Now, Khalil's brother was brought in. He led the team Buffalo last year with eight sacks. I mentioned Jones from Maryland led the team with seven sacks last year. And I went over Rashad Smith's numbers. So out of those three players, what do you think uh, might stand the best chance at making the team? 
Um, I would think probably um, Rashad Smith from, that was the FAU name, right? Yep. I get the names mixed around in my mind, but the FAU guy who's more of an off-ball linebacker or an inside linebacker for the Bears. Um, they don't have great depth there right now behind their starters. Um, they lost both um, Kevin Pierre-Lewis and um, Nick Kwiatkowski, who were their top backups last year. So there's a chance for somebody to emerge there as a backup. Uh, you know, obviously with any linebacker who's an undrafted rookie, special teams will be really important. And I really don't know much about the contributions they could make there. But um, I think that the off-ball linebacker probably has the best shot just looking at the Bears roster. Okay, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about that other corner. Round five, Kendall Vildor out of Georgia Southern. And uh, considering he's a round five pick, uh, the second corner out of the top four picks for the Bears. So that was uh, an obvious position of need. Yeah, I think this one is really more aimed at 2021. They've got a buster screen as they're starting Nickelback for this year, but he's likely gone after this year, getting okay. a little bit older. Okay. Um, and so uh, Vildor really matches the profile of Nickelback that they've liked under Ryan Pace. If you think back to like Bryce Callahan or Craven LeBlanc, who spent some time in Philadelphia after Chicago, um, and now Screen, or last year in the sixth round, they drafted Duke Shelley. They're all small but really physical cornerbacks who play real feisty and aggressive at the line of scrimmage. That seems to be the profile that the Bears go for. And so we'll see. Um, I'm guessing in 2021, the starting nickelback will probably be either Vildor or Duke Shelley, uh, day three pick from last year. So that'll right. be a fun little battle to watch in camp this year to see who looks to have the leg up right now. All right. And then the uh, final three picks, the other fifth rounder was Darnell Mooney, the receiver out of Tulane. Uh, this was a, a, a huge class. We all know for wide receivers. Uh, but Mooney. What was the, what did the, what did the staff say about the reason to go after Mooney? Yeah, the Bears really needed speed um, at wide receiver. Uh, they just they lost Taylor Gabriel this off season, who was kind of that smaller, uh, really fast role, um, and they needed somebody to come in and fill that. And they talked about they actually traded two sixth round picks to trade up into the fifth and get Mooney. So they talked about. Uh, really liking his ability to step into that role eventually. Obviously, again, coming from Tulane, that's a big jump to the NFL. We'll need sure. some development, which is why they went out the week after the draft and signed Ted Ginn, who does a lot of those same things. Okay. So again, I think this was more of a future pick. They're hoping that he can step in as the third wide receiver next year and provide them that speed element and learn under Ginn this year. All right, and then the final two picks were both seven, seventh round guards. Uh, that did not have draftable grades at our lads. So what was the reasoning behind taking both of these guards? I mean, it's which I'm sure excited round. the fan base. <laughs> yeah, it's the seventh round. You're not really expecting much. But yeah, these were both when they were the picks were announced. I was like, who? Yeah. I had never heard of either of these guys. Um, they have some great names, though. Arlington Hambright and <laughs> Lachavius Simmons. That's just. That's great right there. I've like already players. learned how to spell them, so I'm pretty proud of myself for that. There you go. Um, actually, Pace in his pro, uh, post-draft press conference talked about Hambright moving to guard. He played left tackle at Colorado. Okay. Um, but Simmons they actually like as a right tackle, so they're going to try him as a developmental prospect there. Okay. Um, okay. I think... Hambright has a real interesting path. Did a couple years at junior college, then a year at Oklahoma State, but got hurt and lost his job and transferred to Colorado. Um, so he's kind of been around the map a little bit, but has a real good athlete. Again, that a relative athletic score, zero to 10 scale. He came in as a 9.66. Wow. Okay. Um, so really athletic, but undersized for tackle. And okay. that's actually a profile that hits decently well on day three a good college tackle who's just not big enough but can slide into guard. Um, so probably the Bears are looking at that for just developmental hope. Um, and Ham or Simmons is kind of the opposite. He played a lot, um, small school, but played a lot, and is just a big physical mauler, but 
um, lacks athleticism a little bit. So kind of hoping he can be that like road grading right tackle, but again, is going to need some development there to handle speed rushers in the NFL. All right. And then the other player to mention was Artavis Pierce, the running back out of Oregon state, uh, four years of production with the Beavers. Uh, this year, they came really close to breaking through with a bowl game. Uh, things are going well there. I, I like the direction of the program. Interesting that Pierce uh, was the second leading rusher for the beer for the Bears for the Beavers in 2016 and 2017 when Ryan Nall, the Bears running back, was uh, his teammate. Yeah, there's uh, we might see a competition between. Between those two for a roster spot here this year because right now the Bears have David Montgomery pretty entrenched as their starter Tariq Cohen technically the backup but really more of a hybrid running back wide receiver role so if Montgomery went down they would need somebody to be the main rusher um, and right now the incumbent is Null but um, actually like Pierce has a bit more uh, speed to him than Montgomery or Null do so that could be an interesting element of offering just something a little different than what they already have on the roster. I'll be really curious to see how he looks in training camp. Was there, before I let you go, was there a, uh, was there a position or a player that the fans felt that the team could have went after maybe it was and, and and we could even talk a little bit about free agency but it was going into the off season between free agency and the draft how did how did the fans feel about how it all turned out and was there someone specific or a specific position that they felt was not taken care of i think you have to stick with the obvious answer here and talk about quarterback Obviously, the Bears traded for Nick Foles to add, um, you know, we talked about that earlier, some more depth and competition with Trubisky. But it was pretty surprising when the Bears got out of draft weekend without drafting or even signing an undrafted free agent quarterback. I know there were a lot of Bears fans who were intrigued by Jalen Hurts in round two or uh, somebody like, um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on Jake his name. Jake the Jake Fromm, yes, who fell, actually would have been there for the Bears in round five. Um, those were two names that kept popping up. Or even some, just somebody, anybody, signed an undrafted <laughs> anybody. free agent. Just anybody to, I mean, it's a lottery pick. Those late round picks sure. are, are for a quarterback are like maybe one in a hundred pans out. But nobody pans out if you don't take a swing. And they haven't taken a swing at all this year on a rookie, which was Pretty surprising. So right now, Tyler Bray is number three? Yeah, they seem to really like him. He's been, you know, he came over from Kansas City with Nagy and has yeah. just been kind of bouncing around with him for a couple of years. Looks decent against third stringers in yeah, preseason, but he's like 30. Yeah. He's obviously he is not what he is. an NFL yeah. quarter. Like, yeah, yeah, he's just a camp arm. Uh, which player in this draft would you... Who do you think has got the – I might as well ask you as far as give me the best top sleeper. Top sleeper? I am a personally a big fan of Darnell Mooney. I, uh, okay. Somebody put me on to him about two weeks before the draft, and I watched some of his um, – just some of his plays from last year. And it's always hard to tell when it's a small school playing small school. But he is he's fast. He's got um, – well – Pretty good hands most of the time. He did have some issues with drops, but I think he's got some skills that could translate with some development. So when he was taken, that must have been quite interesting. Yeah, there was actually a lot of... Uh, I'm mostly active on like Bears Twitter. Um, there were a lot of people on Bears Twitter who really wanted him on day three when they didn't get a wide receiver in round two. And so there was that was the pick that most of the people, at least in my little corner of the internet blogosphere, seemed to be really happy with. Excellent. We'll keep an eye uh, for sure then on Darnell Mooney uh, in a draft that a uh, little lacking star power, but you never know. And th this is a big off season for really the, the coaching staff, the general manager. If things don't go well this season, we could see, is it possible we see a complete overhaul? Yeah, I mean, you never know. Uh, Ryan Pace has been here for, this will be year number six for him, year number three for Nagy, and they've only had 
one winning season, one playoff season, and they didn't even win a playoff game. So yeah. So if they do that again, then we're 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 in danger territory for both of them. I'd have to think so, okay. um, especially with that would probably mean Trubisky is officially a washout bust. So for pace, for sure, that probably would not spell good things for him. And then a new GM always wants their coach. So. All right. Well, uh, lastly, before I let you go, Jonathan, tell us a little bit uh, about the Bears blog. It's been around for a while. And uh, what should Chicago Bears fans, what, what would interest them the most about checking out the Bears blog? Sure. Yeah. It's actually been around since about uh, 2005. Started with just one guy, Jeff Hughes, who just writes from a fan perspective, which is what first attracted me to it as a reader. Um, I think he has some really interesting and unique stuff with not trying to be a sports writer all the time, but just writing about how he feels about things as a fan, um, which leads to some fun stuff, especially in the off season. Like right now he's doing like this three question series with uh, just a whole bunch of different Bears fans he knows from all different walks of life talking about how they became Bears fans, what their favorite memories are, things like that. It's been really fun for me. Awesome. Well, it was nice having you on for the first time. Uh, we look forward to getting the opportunity again some other time down the road to speak with, speak with you again, Jonathan, Jonathan. So thanks for taking your time to speak with us, and uh, we'll talk to you sometime soon. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Jonathan.